<laughs> Alfred, shall we move on to our topic, how to host a game night? Will you tee this one up for us, Alfred? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll admit for all of my uh, bluster about proper etiquette and being um, a rules lawyer, I am the serial freeloader of this group. I think Matt, Maddie and Tom, uh, were such gracious hosts, uh, can, can point on me as being maybe sometimes the, the worst of it. Um, I've been enjoying game nights with both of y'all for years. And I think I've brought snacks once. I, I have packed up a game only after Tom has eventually started to chide me for it. I mean, hey, I used to make a little bit of a trek across, across the city, not as much as others who would stick around. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, I'm not trying to just game and be out, but I, I wouldn't always do all the things. And it's not only the guilt of that that gives me the kind of idea for today, but also because I really feel like you and, and Tom are so great and gracious about creating an environment that's conducive towards loving the games. And that's so the reason why I adore board gaming is, is, I mean, the games themselves speak loudly, but it's the, the environment that you both have, have conjured that allowed me to, to kind of be myself uh, and to, to really um, recognize these individuals that make up our board game group. So I love it. And I wanted to then reduce all of that grandiose thought down to what snacks we were eating. <laughs> Cause that's the real magic. Let's, let's... well, okay, let me speak to what you said. So, First of all, I, I put together a, a list of 10 tips for anyone attending a game night. And we'll, we'll get into that in a second. And, and some of them are a little silly and not totally. Worth it. But uh, <laughs> you, you don't have to bring, you, look, you, everybody brings something to the game night. And, and what you bring is you are our rules lawyer. You, you take some of that pressure off of Tom and I to track the game state. We know, I, I always know that at the end of a teach, if you don't have any questions for me, you got it. And you know the teach. And you then become sort of the, the teacher's assistant for the rest of the game, even sometimes teaching the teacher to make sure that people continue to follow the rules and so that we have a, uh, a fair and correct game as we go on, which is whenever I know that you're at the table, that, that gives me a sense of relief knowing that uh, if something important is missed, uh, if I don't catch it, Alfred will. And that, and that is, you know, that, that is your role. And that is the reason you haven't been kicked out of the group yet. Even <laughs> you snacks. I mean, I moved, I moved across the country out of shame for my lack of snacks and or beverages, but. Um... Uh, so, so yeah, let's, before we get into my top 10 lists for people attending a game night, let us talk about appropriate snacks to bring. To game night. God, I wish I had a drop for this. Like snacks, snacks on the table. I mean, snacks I get, you bring. I get working, yeah. <laughs> snacks that you should eat. Uh, okay, I don't know. I mean, uh, Alfred, ta- let, tell me what are good board game snacks. Okay, so part of the reason why snacks are so much in my mind is because I'm sitting here playing BGA, reaching for something to not only fidget with, like be it you know the random stuff that's on my desk that's just littering the space. But I, it also is like, you know, the screen itself is such a weird arbiter of, of game, right? And and really, like when we have the game board game set out, there's there's a lot of rules that come up because of the nature of things. And, you know, part of it is that, you know, two hours into a game, your mind is flagging. You are suffering. And either you need the libation of a good beverage or you need a snack to do the work that blood sugar can. And, and Dimitri... Thank goodness you are still alive in our gaming group. I am so sorry at times for what we put you through. Um, <laughs> being blood sugar dependent as as you can be. Um, I will say there's two cardinal rules for me and snacks that I've seen, seen brought. And those rules get broken all the time. Again, you and Tom have slightly different styles about it. And you were both gracious. But one of the rules is that it, it must not be cheesy. It mu- must not be. It must not have things that come off in your hand and then can be transferred to the board. And then the second rule is it must not be drippy, Mm. right? So those two things, it's so funny because you would think that those don't sound that palatable, but there are many snacks that do that thing of sadly being very cheesy or being very like, you know, rubbing off and dripping on things. And so salsa's out, like cheesy puffs are out. Chips in general. Yeah. Chips are not 
a board game friendly snack because of dust and residue and chip grease. Uh, you said we want no, just like just like our euros. We want a dry theme. We want like the the least salted pretzel. You know, yeah. like so that is that, that's an, so a pretzel is a perfect game night snack. Mix nuts. Yeah, nuts are also good unless, but you don't want beer nuts or you know powder coated nuts of any sort. Nope. <laughs> nuts and pretzels are perfect. You know what? What else is perfect? Popcorn is perfect. Thank you, Alfred. But, um, but unflavored, not buttered popcorn. Don't flavored. be, you're not at a movie night. Don't be ridiculous. Come on, calm down. Also, <laughs> people would often, people often think this is bad, but it's great. Chocolate covered things are fine. As long as the temperature is controlled in the room. Because chocolate not going to melt in your hand unless it's a hundred degrees in there. We're always popping little delicious chocolate treats in our mouths as we're playing games. I like mean, a little handful, handful of Trader Joe's chocolate covered miniature peanut butter cups. Fantastic. Throw five in your mouth. Take your turn. Blood sugar. And I've talked about this before. Situational awareness. You're at a hot, you're in like an enclosed room full of a bunch of sweaty, sweaty people. Uh, don't, yeah, don't offer up and around, especially over the game board. What will eventually raise you the ire and not be invited back. That's, that's the ultimate goal of being a good, uh, Attendee at a game night, as I have learned, is just the willingness and urge to not be uh, ostracized. Um, Can, you know, canned beverages, safer than bottled beverages. Yes. A bottle of beer, very easy to knock over. A can of beer, not as easy. Yeah. Also, just put it on the floor next to you if you can. Yeah, don't even bring it to the board. I think I think you and Tom uh, have have undergone a little bit of fit, like moving around that space of thinking, like, well, sometimes maybe if it's like a strong coaster, your coaster game is very strong. Um, that kind of thing of those plastic little ways of holding not only chits and and kind of meeples, but also holding your snacks, like really multi-use. You've thought it out. You've done, you had your fair share of game nights. Uh, I do think also it's important to to think in this kind of COVID reality that we will exist in the future. But this is kind of true. Like it's nice to have snacks for everyone that are maybe away from the board game table that people can take a break as if it was a long poker night. You, you know, you, you kind of, you're moving away from the board to, to do your heavier snacking, but consider maybe to having your personal snacks that are like in your sweet spot that, that don't break any of these cardinal rules, but are like work for you and your particular picadillos. I remember once bringing, um, not the star of the show, these kind of like exploded puff pea protein snacks, uh, not popular with others, maybe not the best snack. Uh, I felt, I felt a little, little out in the game group, you know, but you got to go through that. You got a learning curve. You got to do it. Um, don't bring a, sne- a stinky snack. Yeah. Don't bring your weird, gross smelling, like uh, jerkies or your uh, your weird kale chips. That stink. Yeah, that's stink. I've done that before. Uh, can I can I single out one person in our game group and not and just because I want to apologize in advance and then berate them, but only in the kind of way that we 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 do love each other. We have a, a, a kind of a, a, a sisterhood of the traveling pants completely. That's us. So, Jesse, when you bring the complete bowl of Chipotle, <laughs> the whole thing, hey, we're all guilty of that. We all need our protos to powerly, efficient, efficiently move our brain. Um, but I think that that's just one of those things. Just like, hey, this is accepted. This is part of us. This is us well, in, our, in our imperfectness. I think that will lead us perfectly into my yeah. top 10 tips. Mm. on how to attend a game night. These are not tips for hosting a game night. No, nay. These are tips for attending a game night. Are you ready for these, Alfred? And I would love your opinion on these as we go. Yes. If you if you are guilty of one of these, I would appreciate if you said... Shame. <laughs> shame. Silently raising my hand. Shame. Yes. But it will say uh, shame. Okay. Number one. And by the way, Game night starts before game night starts. This one is don't text in advance and ask what games are being played or who is attending. So true. That's rude. That's a rude question to the person who is planning because the subtext of that question is I'm still deciding if I want to come. Yeah. And it's dependent on what's being played or even worse, who's attending. 
A, don't put me in that position where I have to decide what we're playing yet. Because by the way, the answer is always going to be the same. Not totally sure yet. We'll all decide as a group. Or a couple games on the table tonight. We'll figure out we're playing together. The Ooh. other answer is I have no idea who's coming because most of you jerks always forget to RSVP. Or, I mean, I will say this too. I know some of that new hotness that you guys are receiving and you take 40 minutes to set it up. And for someone to be like, well, I know you need four players to play this, but I'm not really down or I don't really know about this person. Suddenly that 40 minutes becomes what? Like, or, you know, hours sometimes to set up some of these games to break them all out. I've seen you do it many a time. And that leads to my second point. But I just briefly want to say, this, these are all tips for, for a group that loves each other and that is comfortable with each other. Obviously, if you are new to the group or new to a group and you have issues with certain people in the group, then you should ask if they're going to be there. Or if you are a member of the group who particularly dislikes certain genres of games that are played at that group, you should ask. I'm talking about a group that is happy to come together every week and has been doing so for a long time and is comfortable with the people there and is aware of what is played. In that scenario, I still find it rude to ask who is coming and what games are being played because you have joined this game night and with that comes a certain level of trust Mm -hmm. and that feels like uh, uh, an attack on that trust when I am being forced to convince you to show up to a game night that you've been coming to for years or the one that you've already agreed to come to i, I get it some nights some nights you're just going to miss but you've already told them that that you're coming or not and that should be the only real binary that's involved here every so rule i'm going to give you does not apply to new players at a new game night these are only for a a, a set group where everybody knows the rules and everybody's coming everybody's comfortable with each other rule number two be okay with what game is being played that's part of the social contract you have agreed to in joining a game new. Some nights you're going to show up and you're not going to be in love with the game that's being played. Now, a good host will sort of pick up on that and maybe try to steer you towards a game you'll enjoy more. But sometimes the game that you're showing up to, the person like Alfred has said, has spent 40 minutes setting up a game and has spent four hours learning to play it. And has been waiting all week to play this game and spent $60 on it and got a babysitter and did all this stuff. So and, you've I, showed up. and the least you can do is sit down and play it. I will say shame here. And Maddie, I think you have to say shame too, because shame. <laughs> maybe, shame. maybe the game that's on the table has a hidden trader mechanic and you know, you are in for an hour of well, somewhat meaningless dialogue that is circular and, but you know what? At the same time, at the end of it, you will have stories to tell your your children, potentially, if, maybe, if maybe. that's the kind of stories you tell your children. But um, Now, look, I, I say this every time. When I show up to Tom's game night, I expect we will be playing Avalon. Yes. That doesn't mean I'm not going to complain about it, but I'm not going to. Part- no, but our complaining about it, I would like to think, is part of our meta. That is part of the meta. We are setting up that we are good people who hate being liars, and therefore we are not liar, liar pants who enjoy lying. Just saying. Well, just look. If, if anybody doesn't enjoy my complaining about it, I promise they are enjoying it more than I'm enjoying playing Avalon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Next up, bring a snack or a beverage if you feel like eating snacks or beverages. Shame. If you are it- <laughs> hit the shame, shame. for you there. Yeah, uh, shame. If you are arriving at game night and thinking. Gosh, I would love to snack on an old snackaroo or drink down a cold bevy. You should have one in your hand when you walked in the door and enough to share with others. Away from the table. Away from the table. Simple as that. If there's a game that you really want to play, buy it and come ready to teach it. Mm. How about them apples? How about them apples? (laughs) Don't talk during the teach. Yeah, that's a big one. Then don't look at your phone during the teach. Shame. Someone spent a couple hours. <laughs> Shame. Someone spent Shame. hours learning it. Shame. Don't make them teach it twice. Okay. 
Don't blame the host if you didn't hear a rule or if a rule wasn't perfectly taught and it caused you to make a mistake in the game. We're doing our best. I do find it really interesting that the learning game thing is, yeah. Yeah. The the learning game thing is a, is a real deal thing and it's a whole different kind of way of playing. We have to embrace that. It's beautiful, but you're not going to have your perfect game unless you're Maddie and you you hit a home run first time. time. Not very smart and don't pay attention to me. (laughs) I love dinner, Alfred. Alfred, do you love dinner? I eat it every day. Almost. Alfred, do you love game night? I yes, yes, Maddie, so much. I, I miss it so much. And I love game night. Don't combine them. <laughs> Keep them separate events. Eat your dinner before you come to game night. Unless but you're playing, night. unless you're serious about Monopoly at McDonald's, then. But if you have to eat dinner at game night, make it Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> make it a bowl. Make it something simple and eat it quickly and get it off the table. As fast as you can. Yeah. Don't bring a big old sloppy sandwich. Don't bring soup. <laughs> I would bring Zanku chicken to your game night because it was around the corner. And I feel bad about it. That's a shame. That's a shame right there. But also at the same time, shame. Zanku, those of you shame. who know, Zanku chicken in LA is an institution. It is delicious. And it is near Maddie's office. So that trifecta. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I admit it. I admit it. If there are new people at the game night, sometimes you'll show up at the game night. Someone has a friend in from out of town. Happens a lot at Tom's game night. Sometimes someone uh, wanted to come and check it out. Check out your game night. It's not the usual 10 people. You got a new person there. Go ahead and tone down your aggressive camaraderie with each other. Let's don't, don't make it feel like a fraternity. Don't, you know, that's not the night for all the mean inside jokes. That's a night to sell the group to a newcomer and make it seem fun. So that's not the night where we're all calling each other names because we can and we love each other. That's the night where we don't do that. And we're friendly and make it feel more welcoming. It's such a huge part of the game. Again, just camaraderie in general of just being like t- getting rid of the gatekeeping of any kind, really seeing the person in front of you rather than the kind of the, the persona that they're playing and just understanding that these are all individuals. We all love, love these game spaces and it's just better when there's more of us. hundred percent. Number nine. I'm going to go ahead and just start this sound yeah. now. Shame. Don't clean up the board Shame. game. <laughs> Shame. Don't clean up the board game when it's over. Shame. Yeah. Stick around. Shame. Put it in the box. Put Shame. Get the baggie. Put all your little pieces in the baggie. Shame. And put it back in the box. Shame. Now, small <laughs> caveat for that. If the person is me and has a very specific way they want their game put back, don't try to put it back. Right. If the person says, you know what? I got this. Listen to them. Mm-hmm. Because they will have an anxiety attack if you put the things in the wrong thing. And uh, yeah, you, you hit all the shames and I deserve more of them because I bail on game nights like like somebody disappearing in a, in a smoke bomb, like a ninja. Yeah. Become one of my favorite parts of game night is now <laughs> when you leave early because it's one of the, my, the biggest laughs I have all night. Now, last one. And I'm going to say this is my number one rule. My number, this is more important than all the other ones. If you only remember one, this is the one. Don't have AP in a learning game. Yeah. My goodness. Take your turn. Play inefficiently. Make a mistake. Let's learn the game. Let's not try to win. Let's not try to min-max. Let's not try to destroy Let's not try to have a perfect game. It's a learning game. Let's get the learning game under our belt. And then let's have a little AP in the next game. I'll forgive it. But in a learning game, it's, it's rude. It's everything. 
it all has an asterisk next to it. Every learning game is not the game. We don't, that doesn't, you know, count in the kind of global point tally. Sure, it, it's, it, it feels good to win. It also feels good to present a good challenge to others. They feel like they've earned it. You've earned it. But we're all learning. We're all just getting the, the swing of it. The, the, you know. Just push the buttons. See what happens. Don't make me. It, 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 in fact, it, it, it makes it harder for everyone else to learn the game because you're disrupting their flow. Yeah. And you know, it isn't like we're going to review it after one play anyways. So just a little shame there too, probably at times, but we are going to set, we are shame. going to come up with, we are going to come up with opinions shame. and thoughts and feelings. And if, if shame. you're bending that space to be a, like unwieldy, then it's, we're going to have negative feelings about it. Partially just because somebody wasn't letting the game flow. Right. So. Yeah. I'm going to now stop my insanely patronizing and uh, confrontational <laughs> tone that I kept throughout that. I hope that you know that that was uh, done with love and jovialness. Uh, we are game night that we have with our group when we have it again and when we've had it in the past. I, I would describe as wildly positive and loving. Oh, gosh. And yes. Kind. Uh, and so... Um, no, I, I would wilt under the power of the sun so quickly if there was actually a mean bone in anyone's body at that game night. I wouldn't go. I have, uh, I have enforced zero of these rules over 10 years, and I will continue to enforce zero of these rules in the next 10 years. But it is still fun to say them aloud. And you make a better, you make a better, more gracious attendee. You will be invited back to game nights. You will be popular. It will be wildly popular if you can just do even half of these, I'm sure. They're just tips, you know, don't worry about them. Hey, if you enjoyed that video, you very well might enjoy the other videos you now see being suggested to you on screen. Also, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could like, share, or subscribe to our Game Brain channel. Thanks so much.